Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, details on a deadly crash where a SAPD officer hit a pedestrian with a patrol vehicle. A long-standing tradition returns here to the Alamo City. Coming up this morning, we are live at the Alamo as history is remembered. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 69 degrees to start your Sunday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the work week look like? Or what does your spring break look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. Happy Sunday. It is 6 o'clock this morning, March 6th. Happy How, Sunday. Happy Sunday. What did you end up doing yesterday? I actually laid out in the sun Whoa. in my backyard um, because it was beautiful. Now, we did have some touch and go clouds, mm -hmm. but it was warm and sunny. I mowed my whole yard. I was I was outside for most of the day. Productive yesterday. day. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, today's going to be a day where we'll see touch and go clouds as well, Sarah and Max. And in fact, there are some areas of light mist and drizzle out there, mainly across the hill country, but it is warm to start our Sunday. Temperatures are near 70 degrees at 69 in San Antonio, 65 in New Braunfels, 69 in Hondo and 65 in Kerrville. Very impressive when you consider that our average high temperature is right near 70 degrees and we're already near there already. Now visibility is down to three miles in New Braunfels and three miles in Kerrville north of San Antonio. That's where we've got a little bit of drizzle at the moment, but throughout the day today we're going to see those skies clear. So we are going to be on a temperature roller coaster this week. And I made a literal roller coaster to describe that. All right, today we're going to be near 83 degrees. Tomorrow morning, a cold front sweeps through and we'll be at 56 in the afternoon. Then by Tuesday, we'll be even colder. 40s all day on Tuesday with some sprinkles. And then we'll see a nice rebound back into the 60s on Wednesday. And then Thursday will be near 80 degrees. And then finally, another front will arrive, knocking our temperatures back down into the 50s by the end of the week. So I know that it's a big week, a lot of people on spring break, but again, temperatures all over the place. We'll talk about this in rain chances coming up in just a bit. Sarah Max. All right, thank you, Sarah. Happening right now, a long-standing tradition returns to the historic landmark. Don at the Alamo commemorates the anniversary of the 1930, the 1836 siege. Stephen Cavazos is live there this morning. Stephen, how is history being remembered today? Good morning. Max Air, good morning. You can see right behind me, we have a pretty huge crowd out here outside the Alamo, also being greeted with some string quartet uh, behind me. Just take a look right now what we're looking at this morning, the sights. Uh, and all of this to remember the Alamo defenders uh, who made that sacrifice on the morning of March 6th, 1836. Uh, this is a long-standing tradition, which we've covered several times. Just take a look at this video from just two years ago, a pretty huge event. Don at the Alamo features those performances that uh, show the events that led up to the battle, living history demonstrations depicting the Texan and Mexican armies, musical performances, if you can hear that just right now, and a lane of the wreaths that includes organizations like the Daughters of Republic of Texas and descendants of the Alamo Defenders. Now, the ceremony is going to be lasting about 30 to 40 minutes. However, they will conclude with a live musket firing demonstration and a performance of Amazing Grace as the sun rises over the Alamo Church this morning. Now, of course, it is still a very quiet morning out here as some of these spectators are going to watch some of those depictions come up in a few minutes, but this event will just be one of the events that's going to be happening today. There will be several, as many will be gathering back here to remember all the events that took place the morning that battle happened. We're going to have more coming up in the next half hour of GMSA, so stay with us. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say a pedestrian is dead after a San Antonio police officer hit him with a patrol vehicle while responding to a call on the city's west side. The incident happened around 8.30 last night on West Commerce Street and Northwest 39th Street. According to SAPD, the man was in his 60s wearing dark clothing when he was hit. EMS pronounced the man dead at the scene. The officer is a two-year veteran with the police department. Neither of their identities have been released at this time. This incident is still under investigation. Out of the latest in the chaos in Ukraine, a third round of talks between Russia and Ukraine set to take place tomorrow. Russian President Vladimir Putin is warning that Ukrainian statehood is in jeopardy and is blaming U.S. sanctions. ABC's Karina Mitchell has a story. 
Potential new trouble in the worsening relations between the U.S. and Russia. WNBA All-Star Brittany Griner is in the custody of Russian authorities after they say they found vape cartridges containing cannabis oil while searching her luggage at an airport near Moscow. The State Department says they're aware of her arrest and will be doing whatever they can to help. The arrest comes as Russia continues its push into Ukraine. President Joe Biden speaking with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky this evening says his administration is working closely with Congress to secure additional funding to help Ukraine. The UN estimated that by Saturday night as many as 1.5 million people will have left Ukraine with more than 750,000 people entering Poland. But as many people leave, many others stay behind to fight. In Kyiv, hundreds of men lined up ready to join the Ukrainian army. We know why we are here. We know why we defend our country and our guys that are actually standing there and fighting uh, Russian military forces, they know what they are doing. Those guys, they don't. We know what we are doing and that's why we will win. Meantime, Russian President Vladimir Putin warning a no-fly zone over Ukraine would constitute a declaration of war. Both Visa and MasterCard suspending operations in the country. The U.S. State Department warning all Americans to leave as soon as they can. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Authorities say six people are dead after tornadoes swept through central Iowa, damaging homes, knocking down trees and toppling power lines. Emergency management officials say four were injured in addition to those killed when the tornado touched down Saturday in an area southwest of Des Moines. Among those killed were children and adults. Emergency officials say 25 to 30 homes were badly damaged by that tornado. The storms also caused damage in the Des Moines suburb, suburb of Norwalk, areas just east of Des Moines and in other parts of eastern Iowa. All right, in Mexico, authorities say at least 22 people hurt in a brawl yesterday. It all happened during a soccer game just northwest of Mexico City. So take a look. Fans storming the field during the match. Pictures and videos shared on social media showing people being beaten, kicked, and even dragged in what appeared to be the seated area of the stadium. As a result, the league suspended the match after just 62 minutes of play. Civil protection authorities say nine of the 22 injured have been transferred to the hospitals. At last check, two are in serious condition. Time now, 6.07, 69 degrees out. Max, what's going on with Coach Pop? Has he made it yet? No, he hasn't made it yet. And it is, it's one of those where if you keep talking about it, we kind of saw the same thing with Steph Curry. When you keep talking about the record, it gets harder and harder to, to attain. We need to just not uh, talk about it. Don't talk about it and we'll get some wins. But I will say, uh, patience, Spurs fans. This team has done so well. And we're so young and so exciting. We're going to have highlights and what comes next with Coach Pop in just a few minutes. Give Coach Pop some patience. All right, 69 degrees. Man, it is muggy out there and warm. But will this trend continue? Sarah Spivey says she's going to take you for a roller coaster ride <laughs> with the forecast this weekend when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday and happy March. Sarah Spivey, it feels like March out there right now. Today it does. I'm like sweating. But in, the next, in the next 48 hours, guys, we're going to be in the 40s and 50s. Whoa. Yeah, for at least a couple of days because of a pretty strong cold front on our doorstep. Let's take a look, though, outside right now with radar. Starting off with radar to show you that there are some areas of drizzle and mist, especially north of San Antonio near Bernie, out toward New Braunfels. We're seeing some light mist as well. A very, very muggy and cloudy morning. In fact, although it's not showing up that well on radar, you can see that visibility is down to three miles in Kerrville because of some fog and some mist. Visibility down to seven miles at Bernie Stage Airfield, down to two in New Braunfels, and down to five in San Marcos. Visibility around San Antonio is just fine. Again, it's mainly those higher elevations in areas out to the east and northeast that are dealing with some, some mist and drizzle this morning. Temperatures there are a lot closer to the dew points, too. Cooler in New Braunfels right now where it's 63, but that's still very mild. It's 69 at the airport, 69 at Port Say, 71 already in Stinson. We usually see a high temperature of 71 here in San Antonio, so we're already uh, warmer than average down at Stinson. 65 in Kerrville and 65 in Bandera, 68 in Yavaldi. Let me take you through the future cast today. Much like yesterday and the day before, these clouds are going to be stubborn. 
coming and going and we'll see mainly gray skies for the first part of the day here into the afternoon. Though skies are going to clear and we'll have uh, a quick warm up uh, today. As soon as we see a little bit of sun, temperatures are going to soar. We'll be looking at highs around San Antonio in the low 80s, but look out to the west Del Rio. 89 degrees for the high temperature today, near 90. Near 90 in Carrizo Springs, 91 in Catula, 90 in Laredo, even Pleasanton, which is expected to see more sun earlier than here in San Antonio, will be in the upper 80s this afternoon. A very warm Sunday. And the warm temperatures today make the contrast to tomorrow and Tuesday all that more visible. So today again a warm day for us 70 at 10 75 at noon. We'll be seeing skies clear warm and 83 windy today too. Well, at least breezy south winds 10 to 15 gusting up to 25 miles per hour. It's going to be a very mild evening. We'll still be near 70 by 10 PM. All right, let's take a look at the big picture. Here's a look across the United States right now. A big low pressure system working its way across the Great Lakes. This is that same system that unfortunately brought the deadly tornadoes across parts of, of, uh, of Iowa last night. But there's the cold front working its way through North Texas as we speak. And look at the temperature difference here. It's nine degrees in North Platte, 20 in Denver, 22 in Dalhart. So looking at that cold front, we're going to have some stout, cold, shallow air moving through. And here's what the future cast looks like for us. So tonight, late tonight, that front will be moving through the Dallas Fort Worth area and across Valverde County. It's going to produce a thin line of thunderstorms up near Dallas Fort Worth, though. That's where they could be severe here in San Antonio, though. We're just going to be dealing with showers early tomorrow morning. Then behind that front, it's going to be very windy. We'll have wind gusts of up to 35 to 40 miles per hour tomorrow with some light rain continuing off across our eastern counties and then during the day tomorrow will only be in the 50s. It's going to be noticeably chilly tomorrow but doesn't just stop there because into Tuesday we're going to see some redevelopment of some sprinkles. Nothing really heavy and nothing important to help us out with the drought, but those clouds are going to keep things cool. In fact, on Tuesday we'll be in the 40s for most of the day, so it's going to be a, a, a temperature whiplash for us, if you will. So today 80s tomorrow and Tuesday the 40s and 50s. We'll have some nice days sprinkled in there. Wednesday and Thursday look really great. Plenty of sunshine, low humidity, comfortable temps, but another front arrives Friday morning and then notice on Saturday morning forecast low in the morning hours of 32 freezing. So a late season freeze is likely on Saturday morning. Uh, if you have done any gardening or planting, you might want to start thinking about what that means uh, for your plants. RIP plants. <laughs> well, you can take precautions. I'm just kidding. I, I did just put them back in the flower bed. I'll just take them back out. No big deal. <laughs> yeah. No, it's funny. I lived in North Platte for a while, so when I see 20 there and like us being frustrated with 40, I'm like, eh, it'd be worse. <laughs> All right, 615, 69 degrees out. Ahead in this half hour, renovating a rental home can sometimes be tough to do. We'll show you some simple things you can do to make it feel like home. All right, we are checking in with the San Antonio Spurs. They were in Charlotte last night, and we're checking in with Coach Pop, who is still just one win away from tying a huge record. So we weren't going to talk about it, Max. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pick three, seven, two, two, fireball nine, daily four, one, nine, five, three, fireball five. Cash five, nine, 15, 23, 32, 35. Lotto, Texas, four, 14, 37, 39, 51, 52. I didn't play. Okay. <laughs> didn't even need to ask. Powerball 8, 23, 37, 52, 63. Powerball 13, power play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. All right. Spurs played at the Hornets last night. We don't want to talk about We have to talk about it. Coach Pop was looking for the regular season record 1,335 wins to tie Don Nelson for the most regular season wins ever. First quarter, DeJounte Murray. Finding Keldon Johnson. Look at that. Number three for two. A little Euro step. That's a 5-2 Spurs lead. Visions of Manu Ginobili. Keldon now for three. We're tied at 26. He had 17 points in the first quarter alone, but the Spurs still trailed after one 31-30. Second quarter, Jacopoto missing a high shot off the glass. Keldon working hard, getting the putback. San Antonio still down eight, 58-50. Keldon had 23 points in the first half. Spurs led 62-60 at halftime. Let's go to the second half. Third quarter now. Cue up Keldon Johnson with a... That's a three. 
New career high for Kelton, 33 points. Spurs were up 92-89, but the Hornets, P.J. Washington making a buzzer beater, 99-97 Charlotte after three. Fourth frame, less than a minute to go. DeJounte creating his own shot, lefty layup. Going lefty, 119-117 Hornets. The Spurs would not score again. They lose 123-117. Pop still looking for that win. The Spurs now losing four in a row. So let's see if we can break that losing streak. Silver and Black will tip off a seven-game homestand. We need it. Tomorrow night, 7.30, first opponent here at home, the L.A. Lakers, who just got a huge win last night against the Warriors. I think LeBron had like 56. So is there a chance at all? There's a chance. There's 100% a chance. Okay. You're saying there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, and we're still fighting for the play-in, so be patient. Okay. I uh, Cautious optimism. Let's go pop. Yeah, 621, 69 degrees out. Up next, we'll show you the best ways to renovate a rental home to make it better for future renters. Good morning and welcome back. So if you're a landlord, you probably have rental renovations on your to-do list. But the big question is, where do you start? In this morning's Ask Angie segment, RJ Marquez gives us her best advice for renovating a rental. If you want to spruce up your rental property, start by renovating the kitchen. A nice kitchen makes a great impression on prospective renters, and it doesn't take too much time or money to give it a fresh look. Start with smaller updates like repainting the cabinets or installing lighting, adding a fresh black splash, painting, or even adding more workspace like a floating island. If you're willing to invest a little bit more money, new appliances are a great way to attract good quality tenants. The bathroom is another important room to renovate. A modern bathroom is a sign that your property is well maintained and updated regularly. It may sound like an expensive endeavor, but many bathroom renovations can be relatively simple and inexpensive. Try retiling the floor, adding in a shower door, installing a new vent, or replacing the hardware. Updating the flooring is one of my top recommendations when renovating a rental. You don't need to replace the floors completely to give them a modern look. Consider buffing or sanding hardwoods to refresh them without breaking the bank. If you're willing to invest a little bit more, think about a surface like laminate floors or tile that are extremely durable. This way you can keep them clean between tenants and things like pets can have more of a limited impact. For carpet, a deep cleaning is an absolute must between every tenant. If you want the quickest and easiest way to update your rental, look no further than the paint on your walls. You can also easily upgrade your space by adding storage. Nowadays, renters are always looking for top-notch amenities. And when you have a standalone rental, sometimes it's hard to compete with the big units and big buildings that can offer things like pools and other facilities. One recommendation that I have is thinking about your appliances. Upgrading existing appliances by replacing them with newer models is a great way to attract quality tenants. You can also add some other amenities that will help make the space feel like home. Thinking about a fenced yard or outdoor space, or if you have the ability, maybe even something like a pool or a hot tub. If the windows are drafty or look like they need an update, make the switch to energy efficient windows. They're inexpensive and they can be a real selling point to renters because they will help keep energy costs down. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Isn't that the goal though, have multiple properties? It's a dream. Oh, that is the dream. Literally my dream. All right, 627, 69 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on a fire last night in the city south side that has left three people out of their home. And why a law enforcement watchdog is actually saying good things about a new contract to represent San Antonio police officers. We're going to explain in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. 6.30 this morning, March 6th, and I love the uh, the last graphic we saw with the roll. You're doing the wave. Uh, oh, is that? <laughs> that's the wave. It's more of like, ah. Sarah's by, we got a temperature roller coaster Yeah, today. Sarah, you actually Here, went on a it. roller coaster ride in SeaWorld. I went on the newest thr thrill ride mm. in SeaWorld. And how did I you feel? Surge. How did you feel? Uh, guess what, we're gonna actually show it coming up at eight. So Woo. Come back to, at eight or set your DVRs because you'll see. You'll see how we felt. It was a fun ride though, for real. All right, let's take a look outside clouds out there today, this morning, much like the last few days. We are very warm out there for a March morning. We're near 70 degrees. 
and that, that's usually where we see a high temperature. So it is very warm outside and it's breezy too. Winds are from the south southeast at about 15 miles per hour at the moment, and, and that's increasing the humidity. Dew points are in the mid 60s too. Almost a summertime dew point out there right now, and humidity is at 87%. So a very warm and muggy morning. We've even got some areas of mist and drizzle across parts of the hill country early this morning. But look what's going to happen today. We are going to see sunshine into the afternoon and it's going to be warm 83 degrees for the high today breezy to south winds 10 to 15 gusting up to 25 and a very mild evening but this my friends is the last day of warm weather for the next 48 hours or so we have got a cold front on the horizon there look it's 28 in amarillo this morning but if you're planning on traveling across the state of texas today it is spring break so if you're hitting the roads just know that it should be okay across the state of texas we're not really seeing going to be seeing rain in many places around texas today it's late tonight when that cold front moves through that will start to see some storminess up near dallas fort worth even early tomorrow morning in San Antonio, some light rain showers are possible behind that front, at least through the early morning. Uh, 52 in the morning in San Antonio, and then we'll only be in the 50s tomorrow for the high temperature. So if you're planning on traveling later in the day tomorrow, it'll be okay. It'll just be a little chilly out there and even colder on Tuesday. So what's up with the weather? Warm and muggy today. That cold front will come through Monday morning. We'll take a closer look at rainfall chances early tomorrow morning and a seesaw or roller coaster spring break forecast for us with temperatures in the 80s today, 40s and 50s tomorrow and Tuesday, and we'll have a couple of nice days mixed in there as well. So a lot to unpack in the forecast. Hope you'll stick around. I'll have that update for you in just a bit. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Time to check in with Stephen Cavazos. We're going to be talking about a big piece of Texas history, and it is being remembered this morning. Don at the Alamo has been a long-standing tradition going back several decades. Stephen Cavazos is live at the Alamo this morning where we could see sunlight peeping up behind the Alamo. Behind you, Stephen. That's right. Good morning, Max and Sarah. We're about 30 minutes into this uh, the ceremony. You can see right behind me, we do have a lane of the wreaths right in front of the historic Alamo. And uh, the people that have been here are getting that firsthand account of that honor and sacrifice. And they've quietly looked on as history is being remembered this morning. And Sarah, as you mentioned, Don at the Alamo has been a tradition which does describe the events that led up to that historic battle. There have been musical performances, as you can hear just now, history depictions and different speakers, but also descendants of some of those historic historic Texas figures. Now, the ceremony is planning on wrapping in a few minutes and will conclude with a live musket firing demonstration and a performance of Amazing Grace. However, there are other programs that are planned this morning, but again, this is all about remembering that sacrifice and the honor uh, that was made over a hundred years ago. We're going to continue to have more on this story throughout the morning, but definitely a day of remembrance here at the historic Alamo. Max, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Stephen. Well, three people are displaced after a home on the south side went up in flames last night. The San Antonio Fire Department says the fire happened around 845 last night in the thousand block of Crystal. Firefighters said the flames knocked down a power line in the area and left a significant amount of damage to the home. Some residents are currently without power and CPS energy crews are working to repair that down line. Three people were inside the home at the time of the fire, but they were able to escape safely and no one was injured. The Red Cross is working to relocate them. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. A step in the right direction. That's what a local law enforcement watchdog group is now saying about the new contract to represent SAPD officers for the next four and a half years. Amanda Tomas with Act for SA says there were some major wins negotiated into this contract, primarily where it comes to discipline for officers. Now, this new contract limits the arbitration process, which in the past has allowed fired SAPD officers to get their jobs back. Now, an arbitrator can only overturn a firing if the police chief doesn't establish that conduct would make the entire department department look bad or a good reason to fire them based on what the contract describes as law and sound community expectation. The inclusion of an officer's past record into not only consideration for discipline but also to arbitration is a huge win for the community for us.
On the other side, Tomas says this contract lacks changes to civilian oversight of SAPD. She says at one point, the Civilian Review Board, or CARB, was on a list of priorities for the city, but it fell off before they finalized the terms of the deal. Before the contract is officially enacted, it still needs to be signed off by the Police Association and by San Antonio City Council. San Antonio police are asking for the public's help to identify a man accused of robbing a smoke shop last week. This rob robbery happening on the city's southeast side at Head Rush Vape and Smoke on South Cross on February 27th. Just look at your screen there. Police say a man was looking at a water pipe in the store when he allegedly displayed a stun gun and threatened an employee with it. The man allegedly stole merchandise, then ran off from the scene. Anyone with information leading to an arrest can earn, can earn up to $5,000. Just call that number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. That's not the only case we are looking at this morning. Police also searching for a pair of robbers accused of stealing from a Westside pawn shop just last week. This all happened on February 24th on Fredericksburg Road. Police say one of the men held the door open. The other went in and tried to smash the jewelry cases. He hit the glass multiple times trying to get the jewelry. He wasn't able to break it. The manager confronted him. He was told to stay back because they had a gun. Now, the men were seen leaving in a dark colored four door car. Anyone with information asked to call Crime Stoppers. Again, that number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. All right, local San Antonio school districts, we have a number of local public charter schools. In fact, SAISD has an entire section of their website devoted to in-district charter school programs. So over the course of the pandemic, many parents became more engaged in their children's education, and many families have reevaluated their school choices. So if you're interested in the public charter school program or a public charter school, how should you proceed? All right, so later this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Inga Cotton, head of San Antonio Charter Moms, she is set to join us live. We're going to be discussing a number of topics, such as exploring options for your children, great tips if you do want to navigate, search, and apply to local charter schools, and so much more. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section at ksat.com. And then this morning, 8 a.m., tune in for all the answers. All right, the U.S. State Department now weighing in on the arrest of Houston native and WNBA All-Star Brittany Griner. The Baylor University graduate was recently arrested at an airport near Moscow. ABC's Zareen Shah has a response from the State Department. Tonight, a WNBA All-Star arrested and detained in Russia. <laughs> Brittany Griner, a two-time Olympic gold medalist, taken into custody at an airport near Moscow. Russian authorities saying a search of her luggage found vape cartridges containing cannabis oil. Under Russian law, Griner could face 10 years in jail. The Russian Customs Service releasing this video showing a woman who appeared to be Griner going through security. You can see someone removing a package from the woman's bag. The 31-year-old Phoenix Mercury Stars agent releasing a statement saying in part, as this is an ongoing legal matter, we are not able to comment further on the specifics of her case, but can confirm that as we work to get her home, her mental and physical health remain our primary concern. The WNBA saying Griner has their full support and our main priority is her swift and safe return to the United States. The State Department says they are aware of Griner's arrest. They say any time a U.S. citizen is arrested overseas, they stand ready and will be providing anything they can to help. Zorin Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin is warning that Ukrainian statehood is in jeopardy and is pinning the blame on that country's leaders. Putin says Western sanctions are declaring war, but added, but thank God, we haven't got there yet. The Russian leader's tough talk came as the first attempts at ceasefires to evacuate civilians from two Ukrainian cities quickly collapsed. The struggle to enforce the temporary ceasefire showed the fragility of efforts to stop the fighting across Ukraine. Officials from each country blamed the other, though they're expected to resume talks tomorrow. All right, well, back here in the United States, in California, an overturned soda truck and its contents actually blocked part of the freeway just east of Los Angeles. Authorities there saying the fiery crash yesterday involved a semi and two other vehicles. Now, the collision left the big rig driver trapped inside that vehicle. That vehicle caught fire while the driver was inside. Now, firefighters responded to the scene. An ambulance was requested for the driver. The cause of the crash, which spilled the big rig's payload of Dr. Pepper and Diet Coke cans onto the freeway, that cause is still under investigation. Not Diet Dr. Pepper. Yeah.
Time now is 640, 68 degrees out. Well, Max, no good news here when it comes to gas prices <sighs> because apparently they're going to keep going up. And why some experts are saying to be prepared for them to stay like that for a while. Uh, and I mean, we just talked about California. I couldn't live there with those gas I prices. I used to live there. Oh my goodness. We think it's high here. <laughs> yeah. Woo All right. Well, speaking of here, 641, 68 degrees out. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for full forecast in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. All right, so we're starting off warm and humid. It's yeah. toasty. It is. It's well, toasty. for this time of year. Yeah. You or, definitely don't need the jacket. No. Let's, so let's, no. let's put it that way. Even the hot coffee this morning, I should have got, it's like that fine. Cold brew. Yeah, fine line of I need to make that switch back to the iced coffee. Mm. I got the hot coffee right there, mm. so all the way. <laughs> okay, so we are dealing with some areas of a mist and drizzle, not necessarily around San Antonio, but up into Bear, uh, Pardon me, up into Kendall County near Bernie and Comfort area, seeing some light returns there on the radar early this morning. And you can actually see in the visibility uh, that it is a lot lower in Kerrville. Visibility down to five miles in Kerrville, visibility down to five miles in New Braunfels and in San Marcos. It's in those areas that we have a little bit of mist. But otherwise, it's just a muggy, muggy morning and on the warm side, too. It's 68 in Bulverde, 67 in Seguin, 64 in New Braunfels, 69 in Hondo, 65 in Bandera. It's 71 at Stinson and 70 in Pleasanton. Already 70. We usually see a high temperature in the low 70s and it is going to be much warmer than seasonably average today. Let me take you through that future cast. Uh, we're going to see mostly cloudy skies through the early afternoon hours, completely overcast uh, in areas northwest and west of San Antonio until the afternoon and much like yesterday we're going to see plenty of sunshine in the afternoon and that's going to allow us to get fairly warm take a look at high temperatures today around south central texas we're going to be at 82 in new Braunfels, 82 in gonzalez even near 80 degrees in the hill country where those clouds will be a bit more stubborn but out to the west hot 89 degrees in Del Rio for the high temperature, 89 in Carrizo Springs, 91 in Catula, and 90 in Laredo. Temperatures running anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above the seasonable average this time of year. So a very warm Sunday afternoon ahead for us, but take advantage of it because in the next 48 hours, it's going to get chilly. Again, today's going to be a nice day for us. Cloudy at 10, 70 degrees, 75 at noon, 83. That 83 is probably going to feel more like 86, 87 because of a bit of a heat index. Breezy at times too. South winds at 10 to 15, gusting up to 25. Feeling very, very spring-like outside today and tonight will still be mild near 70 degrees at 10 p.m. But let's talk about that change that's knocking on our door. A wider view here across the nation, a big dynamic system across the Great Lakes. This is that same system that unfortunately produced deadly tornadoes across parts of Iowa. It's got a cold front behind it, and this is some fairly potent cold air. Look at the temperature difference uh, behind this front. It's 9 degrees in North Platte, 28 in Wichita, 22 in Dalhart, 34 now in Lubbock. It's knocking on our door, and that front is going to move through San Antonio overnight tonight into early Monday morning. Let's take you through the future cast. Let's look at tonight right around midnight into early tomorrow morning. A th line of thunderstorms is going to develop, uh, especially near the Dallas Fort Worth area where some of that could be severe, but we're really going to be on the tail end of this system. So through early tomorrow morning, just a few light rain showers, not amounting to much, maybe less than 10th of an inch of rain in many places, but that'll continue in the early morning hours and it's going to be windy. Winds will be from the north gusting up to about 35 to 40 miles per hour. That's going to drop our temperatures tomorrow. Look at where temperatures are going to be. We'll be in the 50s tomorrow uh, around San Antonio. A big temperature difference, almost a 30 degree temperature difference, and it's going to continue to stay chilly into Tuesday too as we see cloud cover return. It'll be a cloudy day on Tuesday with even some sprinkles and some showers east of San Antonio, only in the 40s on Tuesday. So warm and spring like today, winter like tomorrow and Tuesday. And we'll have a couple of nice days in there though for spring break like Wednesday and Thursday where we see 
see plenty of sunshine and highs in the 60s and 70s. But you guessed it, another cold front on the way Friday morning. That's going to knock our temperatures back down into the 40s and 50s. And even a light freeze is likely on Saturday morning. So be prepared for that light freeze. You're still going to need to take those freeze precautions, especially when it comes to any sensitive vegetation that's just been planted <laughs> or try to uh, try to avoid oh, uh, planting until after this. Weekend. I know I jumped the gun. I was I was doing it out of it sounded like a sub. Hey, that's just is, good planting, it Sarah Costa. <laughs> it's a late season front, so I do not blame you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right, 649, 68 degrees out. All right, we're going to take a look at the roads because it is spring break, so we know today and tomorrow we'll probably see a lot of travel. Not so much right now. Everything looks yeah, it's like... still early on Sunday morning. Yeah, still early. Like, who wants to get up early on spring yeah, break? People going to church. That's right, that's right. <laughs> we'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. So even before this international conflict, we saw gas prices on the rise. But the Russian invasion of Ukraine having a huge economic impact right here at home, especially if you go to the gas pump. So as ABC's Deidre Bolden reports, according to AAA, prices are now skyrocketing at the fastest, race, fastest pace in history. Tonight, AAA saying gas prices rising at the fastest pace in history. It is getting really expensive. It is almost $4, so it is kind of depressing. Today's national average, three ninety two per gallon, a rise of more than 30 cents in just five days. When the price of oil shoots up significantly like it has, that's going to hit you in the wallet. Patrick DeHaan of Gas Buddy says the national average may hit four twenty five by the end of March, a 60% increase compared to this time last year. For context, the highest on record is 411 in 2008. Some states are already well beyond that. Nicholas Stone says he's been paying $250 per week in gas and can't afford his commute. I don't have a very economical vehicle to drive back and forth from Cookville to Nashville. Therefore, I had to quit my job. I'm not even making enough to, to cover the gas, so now I'm choosing between gas and groceries. One Tennessee school district says the unexpected higher cost of fuel for school buses is forcing it to increase its budget for the fiscal year. And the pain goes beyond the pump. Home heating and food prices are heading higher. Transporting any kind of good, such as groceries, is more expensive with the rising cost of diesel for trucks. As for air travel, carriers may pass along the extra cost of higher jet fuel onto passengers. To be sure, inflation is rising at its fastest pace in 40 years, and experts say we'll go higher from here. Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. Oof. It's just depressing. It is, because it all stems from gas prices. I mean, Uber, Lyft, groceries. Everything. Getting to school. It's, getting to work. Yeah. All I right. I refuse to fill up full tank. <laughs> quarter, at, quarter at a time. <laughs> 654, 68 degrees um, out. Speaking of <laughs> people <laughs> driving. People driving. Traffic looking pretty good out there at 35. Yeah, and no, no one wants to drive. They don't yeah. want to spend the gas. There you go. Honor, sacrifice, and a day of remembrance. We are here at the Alamo this morning as the dawn at the Alamo ceremony is wrapping up. Now, since we've been out here, the audience has quietly looked on as history is being remembered this morning. Dawn at the Alamo has been a tradition which describes the events that led up to that historic battle. There have been musical performances, history depictions, and different speakers, but also descendants of some of those historic Texas figures. Now, that ceremony will wrap with a live musket firing demonstration and performance of Amazing Grace. Now, while that's ceremony is wrapping up. There will be other programs planned throughout the day. We're going to have more on that throughout the morning, so stay with us for the very latest. Reporting Stephen Cavazos, KSAT, 12 News. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the destruction in Ukraine reaching new levels. British intelligence officials reporting Russia is targeting populated areas in an effort to break Ukrainian morale. Ukraine's president pleading for help from the U.S. in a phone call with President Biden. The escalation of the war prompting a new warning for U.S. citizens in Russia, while more Western companies stop doing business in the country. Plus, devastating tornadoes ripping through parts of Iowa, killing at least seven people including two children. More on the severe storm and the damage. And an iconic superhero making a big return to the movie theater, The Batman. What to expect from its opening weekend? It's all ahead here on GMA.
Warm today near 83 this afternoon after the cloudy start, but look at how our temperatures are going to go up and down in the week ahead. We'll be seeing cold front tonight, bringing a chance for some showers, but really sending our temperatures down into the 40s and 50s through Tuesday. Nice days Wednesday and Thursday with plenty of sun, temperatures in the 60s and 70s, but another cold front arrives Friday, a double dose of cold fronts, if you will, and that knocks our temperatures down, bringing us a light freeze, a late season light freeze Saturday morning. Hopefully that's it, right? Hopefully, but you know, March is pretty wacky. So. Not squirrely February though. Yeah, that's true. We'll see you at eight o'clock. <laughs> Good day. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts. A pedestrian right dead, now. hit and killed. The investigation showing it may have been a San Antonio police vehicle. We have the latest in the investigation. A house fire displaces three people and cuts off power to several other residents in the area. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 68 degrees. Not much to see out there right now. Hopefully we get some sunshine throughout the morning. We're checking with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday, March 6th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. So I got to ask, uh -huh. did the sun come out yesterday? It was a little gloomy. I fell asleep on the couch. I did. Well, okay. in the morning I mowed the, the yard mm -hmm. and this, it was cloudy. And then in the afternoon it was like touch and go sun. Okay. Sarah, is it going to be... Base kind of similar today. Yeah, pretty much the same today. Just a couple of degrees even warmer and outside right now we are seeing the cloudy skies at the airport. A few peaks of sunshine, but generally mostly to mainly cloudy skies. Boy, is it warm this morning? It's near 70 degrees. Our high temperature this time of year is 71. So again, we're already starting off very warm and very muggy. Dew points are in the mid 60s. That's pretty high. In fact, it makes relative humidity at 84% and it's breezy too. Winds from the south southeast at about 15 miles per hour. A lot similar to yesterday, just like yesterday. Breezy, muggy, cloudy to start the day, but we will see some sun this afternoon. 67 in Del Rio, uh, 69 in New Valley, 65 in Kerrville, 70 in Hondo, 70 nearly in New Braunfels, and 72 in Catula. Here's today's forecast for you. It looks very similar to yesterday. We'll be at 70 at 10, 75 at noon with clearing skies and warm in the afternoon, 83 for the high. Those winds will be gusting from the south at about 20. 25 miles per hour, but things are going to change a literal temperature roller coaster for us this week. 83 today, but by tomorrow, a cold front will move through. We'll be in the 50s tomorrow, Tuesday in the 40s. We'll have a couple of nice days sprinkled in there too. Wednesday will be in the upper 60s, Thursday in the 70s, and then you guessed it. Another cold front arriving Friday will be in the 50s. Yes, it is spring break for a lot of people out there this week, and as you can see, temperatures a little wacky, but we've also got a small chance for rain mixed in there too. So we've got a lot to unpack in the forecast. All of those updates in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Top stories this morning. San Antonio police say SAPD patrol car struck and killed a pedestrian last night. They say a pedestrian is dead after an officer hit him with the patrol vehicle while responding to a call on the west side. The incident happened around 830 last night on West Commerce Street and Northwest 39th Street. According to SAPD, the man was in his 60s and was wearing dark, cl dark clothing when he was hit. EMS pronounced the man dead at the scene. The officer is a two year veteran with the police department. Neither of their identities have been released at this time. The incident is still under investigation. Well, house fire on the city's south side ends with three people trying to figure out what comes next. San Antonio firefighters on the scene telling us it all happened around 845 last night. This is a home in the 1000 block of Crystal. Investigators say the flames significantly damaging the home, even causing a power line in the area to fall. Some residents this morning at last check just checked the CPS outage map a few moments ago. Some people still without power. Now CPS crews are working to repair that down line. Three people were inside the home at the time of the flames. They were able to evacuate safely and no injuries reported. Right now, the Red Cross working with them to relocate. As for the cause of what sparked the flames, that's still under investigation. Honor, sacrifice, and a day of remembrance. And today marks 186 years since the historic battle at the Alamo. And this morning, crowds gathering dark and early for a special ceremony. Stephen Cavazos is live at the Alamo with more on this year's event. Good morning, Stephen. 
Good morning, Max and Sarah. Well, that ceremony wrapped about an hour ago, but many who attended this uh, ceremony did say that it's important to remember, reflect, and honor those lives. And you can see those wreaths still remain right behind me in front of the historic Alamo. Now, Don at the Alamo is a ceremony that describes the events that led up to that historic battle. This morning, there were musical performances, history depictions, and even a live musket firing demonstration. We did get the chance to speak with Gary Lewinstra, who is with the San Antonio Living History Association. He took on the role of General Santa Ana this morning, and he does tell us that he was happy to see people remember and honor the lives of men on both sides. This was just absolutely awesome to have this many people out this year. All of us are very aware of both sides. Now, also, descendants of some of those historic Texas figures were also in attendance. Now, again, remember, this ceremony has wrapped, but the day's day of remembrance is not over. It'll actually conclude, that is, with Remember the Defenders. The Alamo describes that as a solemn ceremony. Now, that will be taking place at 6 this evening. Of course, we're going to have more coming up in the next half hour of this newscast. Max Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Stephen. Well, local San Antonio school districts, we have a number of charter schools. In fact, SAISD has an entire section of the website devoted to in-district charter school programs. There's a number of local public and, yes, private charter schools right here in our Alamo City area. So over the course of the pandemic, many parents became more engaged in their children's education, and many families have reevaluated their school choices. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Inga Cotton of the San Antonio Charter Moms. Good morning. How are you? Oh, let's see. Mute. Oh, we hear you now. I know, I figured it out. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. So since the start of the pandemic, have you seen a larger number of community members reach out to you? Yeah, actually, the, our engagement has grown. Uh, families got an up-close look at what school is like when their kids experienced um, distance learning or doing school from home. And uh, for some families, they needed a different setting. Like either they needed full-time online or they needed um, full-time in-person. And uh, just getting that up close look, they realized they, they needed to look at more closely at what type of school is going to serve their kids the best. And uh, that's the kind of resources we offer. So charter schools offer kind of specialized learning models. And um, the, the challenge for parents is to try to sort those out and figure out, you know, which school offers what type of learning and what's going to be the best fit for their own children. So Inga, what is the biggest difference that you've noticed since entering the charter school realm? So um, San Antonio Charter Mom started in 2012. So, uh, so we've been at it for a while. We've seen a lot of growth in the number of charter school options. And um, as Max mentioned, the, one of the biggest changes is in San Antonio ISD, then they offer choice schools. So they have over 90 campuses that offer uh, specialized learning programs. Um, and But there's also been growth in the open enrollment charter schools. And uh, what's, what's great about those is that you don't have to live in any particular part of town or be, have ties to any particular school district. Um, so if, there's, um, if your neighborhood public school isn't going to be the right fit, um, there's a lot of other options out there. Um, so that's the biggest change we've seen is just a lot of growth. It means that if a family has their heart set in a particular school, um, you know, they may try to get in, but the good news is there's probably uh, two or three more schools that offer something similar and they have a good chance of getting into one of their top choice schools. Now, we've done extensive stories with programs like the CAS programs and, you know, the San Antonio Women's Leadership Academy. Like you said, there's so much growth, so many options out there. San Antonio Charter Moms is a 501c3 nonprofit, and you guys specialize in helping these families navigate the charter school process. So for any parent listening, what are some of the basic tips that they need to know? So uh, a basic tip is, uh, number one, if you can plan ahead. Um, so schools have already held open enrollment for um, this coming school year. Um, but also don't give up hope uh, because schools are still um, making offers to students on the waiting list. Um, but if this all sounds confusing, like waiting list, lotteries, open enrollment, uh, we have resources to explain that. So we have blog posts on our site, sachartermoms.com. We also have a really active Facebook group. We're at almost 9,000 members. And it's, uh, you know, moms and dads helping each other to, to answer these questions. Uh, and we also have in-person events. Um, we just had one in Universal City, and we're planning ahead for one at the Green Line at Brooks on the south side. So we're going to feature schools that are located on the south side accessible to those families. So that event is on March 26th from 10 to 2 at the Greenlight Park at Brooks. So Inga, what is what would you say the biggest difference is between just a regular public school and a public charter school? Is it smaller classrooms? Is it more one on one um, between student and teacher? Um, is different programs offered? What would you say is just the biggest difference there? 
So I think for, for my own kids, um, they experienced distance learning in the, in the pandemic and it made them feel sort of disconnected with their teachers and their peers. And in order to get them re-engaged, I tried to really listen to them about what their dreams were for what they wanted to be when they grew up. And they both spoke up that they want careers in technology. And so I researched and found a charter school that specializes in technology. And so they do all their core classes, but they also get electives and clubs that, um, that feed into the careers that they're interested in. They get to interact with people working in those fields. And it's gotten my kids much more engaged and motivated to uh, reconnect with school and think about their future. And I think, I think that's what folks are ready for is that uh, we've experienced so much disruption and trauma from the pandemic, but it's, it's time to think about a brighter future and how we can help our kids uh, get ready for that. And the, the charter schools are out there. It's just a communication issue of, um, you know, that, and that's where we come in is explaining those options to families, all these specialized programs. It gets really exciting the more you learn about them. And especially when you have that, that feeling of like, ah, I found the right place for my kids. This is going to click. All right, Inga Cotton, thank you so much for joining us. If anyone wants to watch this interview in its entirety, it's going to be on case.com. Of course, we're also going to have links to SA Charter Moms website and the event happening March 26th. Thank you so much. Thank you, Inga. Thank you. Bye. Time now, 810, 68 degrees now. Ghost first go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sound deflated. Don't sound, uh, you know, discouraged. I'm telling you, you got to stay patient. It's a long season, and we are preparing for the Lakers and LeBron, who happened to drop 56 last night, so hopefully he doesn't do it again. We're going to give you what happened last night and what comes next. The massive tornado touches down in Iowa, killing several people. We have the latest after the break. But first, a quick live look out at the Alamo City. Oof. Warm, humid, cloudy. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for a full forecast in just a bit. Emergency crews are responding after severe weather strikes in the Midwest. That's right. A tornado leaves a trail of devastation and destruction. It ends with a lot of people dead in Iowa. ABC's Karina Mitchell reports. Tragedy in Iowa. Emergency officials say several people are dead after a suspected tornado touched down Saturday in Winterset, southwest of Des Moines. At this time, we can confirm that we have six fatalities, including four adults and two children under the age of five. There are also four adults injured, three that are in serious condition, and one that was transferred to Des Moines Hospital with life-threatening injuries. Several people captured video of the severe weather in Winterset and some of the devastation that was left behind. Emergency officials say the tornado was spotted on the ground around 4.30 Saturday afternoon and left a path of destruction in its wake. Many people had their houses lost that we're saying at this point between from the trail from the tornado started to where it ended. It's probably about 25, 30 houses that we're estimating. The National Weather Service in Des Moines says an initial look at photos and video suggests the tornado may have been an EF3. Survey teams will check the damage on Sunday to reach a final conclusion. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. All right, well, back here at home, 816, 68 degrees. A little cloudy out there, Sarah. Cloudy indeed, but we are going to see some sun like yesterday in the Yay. afternoon. Right, but soak up the warm weather today All right. because tomorrow, guys, we're going to be in the 40s and 50s. Yeah. It's not March. <laughs> yeah, well, March does feature cold fronts uh, quite often, so got to disagree with you there. But <laughs> we are expecting a late season uh, freeze actually by the end of the week. So a lot to talk about outside right now. We've got cloudy skies. It is near 70 degrees outside muggy with temperatures in the low uh, dew points in the low 60s. That's pretty high for this time of year. And we've got breezy conditions too. winds from the south southeast at about 15 miles per hour. That breeze will stick with us throughout the day today. In some spots, we've even got some uh, some foggy conditions, misty conditions like up near Kerrville, Kerrville, where visibility is down to four miles. Visibility down to six miles in New Braunfels and down to five in San Marcos. Otherwise, we are looking at a warm start to the day. 65 in Seguin, 68 at JBSA Randolph, 72 at Stinson, 72 in Castroville, 67 in Rio Medina, and 65 in Kerrville. Guess what? We usually see a morning low temperature in the upper 40s. We're about 20 degrees warmer than that already, and 
this afternoon is going to feature temperatures in the 80s. All right, on the future cast, you can see that these clouds will be stubborn through the morning hours, but as we head into the afternoon, seeing skies clear and it's going to be warm. How warm? Well, some folks will be near 90 degrees, like out toward Del Rio, 89 for the high temperature. 89 in Carrizo Springs, 87 in Eagle Pass, even down 35 here, uh, Catula and Laredo near 90 this afternoon. Around San Antonio, though, we'll be in the low 80s. Low 80s is what's most likely, and even up in the hill country, close to 80 degrees. So taking you through today, at 10, we'll be at 70 and still fairly cloudy. Then at noon, 75, mostly cloudy, but seeing those skies clear. 83 for the high temperature. South winds today gusting up to 25, so it will be breezy. And my this evening with temperatures falling into the 70s, but things change after midnight tonight for us in San Antonio. Let's take a wide view of what's going on across the nation. There's that big low pressure system that unfortunately brought those deadly tornadoes across parts of uh, Iowa. Meanwhile, behind this system, we've got a fairly potent cold front. Take a look at the temperature difference here uh, behind this front. It's 33 degrees in Lubbock, but 66 in San Angelo. So about a 30 degree temperature drop uh, from this front is what can be expected even in the single digits in parts of the central plains. So a very, very cold air mass is on its way here for us, at least according to March standards. But will it bring rain? Well, it will for the Dallas Fort Worth area. That's for sure. Close to midnight tonight, we'll see some thunder showers, even some potential for some severe weather up near Dallas Fort Worth. But notice how we're going to be on the tail end of this system here in San Antonio and across South Central Texas, really only some light rain showers are what's most likely early tomorrow morning. Close to the morning commute, it could be damp in some spots. And then by noon, though, most of that rain will be out of the area and off to the east. Uh, but it will be windy tomorrow. Winds will be from the north gusting up to 35 to 40 miles per hour. So a very windy Monday. That'll be bringing in that colder air. So look at temperatures tomorrow afternoon. About a 30 degree drop from where we are right now. We'll be in the 50s in many places around South Central Texas, 53 in Gonzales, 50 in Hallettesville, 50 in Bernie, even in the 40s up in the hill country and in the 60s out west toward Del Rio. And then the cold air doesn't stop there because by Tuesday we're going to see clouds move back in and even some sprinkles around San Antonio with shower activity out to the east. That'll keep temperatures cool. We'll likely struggle to get out of the 40s on Tuesday. We will, however, for those of you celebrating spring break, have a couple of nice days mixed in there too. Like on Wednesday and Thursday when we'll see plenty of sunshine and temperatures in the 60s and 70s. But look at that, another cold front arrives Friday morning and that's gonna knock our temperatures back down into the 50s. And even by Saturday morning, we are anticipating a light freeze. So gardening, planting, all of those things. If you haven't done it yet, Wait until after this weekend, and if you have already done it, you might want to take some freeze precautions for Saturday morning. A light freeze, not a hard freeze, but a light freeze is expected. All right, so what precautions are you taking? To take up my flowers mm -hmm. that I already put in. I think it's easier than yeah. covering and uncovering. I don't know. It's a whole thing. It is a whole thing. <laughs> All right, 821, 69 degrees out. Come on, Spurs. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> the losing streak continues, but... You gotta be patient. This team is exciting. I think it is well constructed. And there's some awesome highlights we're gonna show you right after the break. Good morning, welcome back. And go Spurs, go Silver and Black on the road last night in Charlotte. A win there would have snapped the losing streak and would have given Pop his 1,335th regular season win. And that would have tied Don Nelson's record. So for most regular season wins of all time, this would have been a great game to do so. In Charlotte, taking on one of Coach Pop's coaching trade members. All right, so first quarter, DeJounte feeding Keldon Johnson. Eurostep looking like Manu out there. 5-2 Spurs lead. And here he is again. Keldon Johnson from downtown for three. We're tied at 26. He had 17 points in the first quarter alone, but the Spurs still trailed after 130-130. Jacopoto missing a high shot off the glass, but... There he is again, Keldon Johnson with the putback. Spurs still down though, 58-50. Keldon had 23 in the first half, but still, Hornets went into halftime leading 62-60. Picking things up in the third now, cue up Keldon again. Look at that, he's left alone from three. He can't do that. He would have a new career high, 33 points. Spurs 
We're up 92-89, but the Hornets, P.J. Washington making a buzzer beater, 99-97, Charlotte after three. Fourth frame, less than a minute to go, DeJounte Murray creating his own shot going lefty, 119-117 Hornets. And that was the last time the Spurs would score. They would go on to lose for the fourth straight time, 123-117. to so the next game, though, tomorrow night, they're going to be taking on the Los Angeles Lakers right here at home. It's going to be the first of a seven-game homestand. We need that more than ever. Tip-off Monday night set for 7.30. We're going to be hosting the Lakers and LeBron James, who just notched 56 points against the Warriors last night. But here's the thing. If you did it once, no deal. <laughs> he's probably not going to do it two games in a row. Well, now he is that you just said it nope, out loud. not going to happen. Spurs are going to win it. Take it back from the universe, Max. I'm counting it right there. All right, 826, 69 degrees out. Residents of Castle Hills wanted to have their say on a proposed multi-million dollar development project, the issues that have residents concerned most. And San Antonio commemorating a historic day for the Alamo. Stephen Cavazos joining us live from Alamo Plaza with today's events. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, March 6th. You guys, I washed my car two days ago mm -hmm. when it was nice and sunny out. It was so <laughs> I'm getting a slow clap from Sarah Good. Spivey. She's like, welcome to being an adult, Sarah. <laughs> okay, but do I have to worry about it raining in our near future? Yeah. yeah. That's kind of what the slow cat <laughs> was for. Because we are expecting some rain early tomorrow with a cold front that moves through. It will not be important rain. It, it'll amount to maybe a tenth of an inch in some places, not nearly enough to help us out with drought conditions, but it will make things a bit damp out there. And, and Tuesday we could see even some sprinkles as well. So yeah, there's a few chances for rain in and, in and out of this week uh, in the coming days. But the biggest thing to know for today is that it's going to be warm. It'll be muggy too, but if you like the warmer weather, soak it up today because as I just mentioned, we are going to be seeing a cold front that'll move through early tomorrow morning. All right, take a look out there. Temperatures will be climbing into the 80s this afternoon after this cloudy start. Winds will be breezy from the south at 10 to 15, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. But right now we are cloudy. A few peaks of sunshine here and there, but generally a warm start to the day too, near 70 degrees. And winds are already breezy from the south southeast at about 15 miles per hour, really pumping in that humidity. Uh, and that's why it feels pretty muggy out there. So warm and muggy today, but that cold front will arrive early tomorrow morning, bringing with it a little bit of rain. But really the biggest difference you'll notice is the fact that it's going to be some 30 degrees colder tomorrow and Tuesday. And then we'll see seesaw back and forth uh, this week, which is spring break for many folks. We'll have a couple of nice days sprinkled in there too. So a lot to chat about in the forecast. So I'll have those details in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for a hit and run suspect that they say left a man injured. Officers were called out to the frontage road of Loop 410 near Rigsby just before five this morning. When they arrived, they found a man with visible blood on his body and on the ground. Police say he had been hit by a vehicle and the driver did not stop. The man was taken to the hospital. Authorities say they will work with the victim to try to get a description of that vehicle. All right, well, Bear County Sheriff's deputies say a man broke down the door, the front door of a friend's home, all in an effort to find his girlfriend. Now, this all happened back on February 21st. BCSO tells us 40 year old Roger Gildone went to his friend's home, started banging the door. When they didn't answer the door, they said Gildone kicked the door in. Now, deputies say he searched the home. The girlfriend wasn't there. According to the arrest affidavit, he learned police were on their way, so he took off in his truck. He also hit a parked vehicle in the process of trying to get away. Deputies spotted him, chased him down. They say he refused to stop. He ended up driving to his home. He was later charged with evading arrest. All right, a big update in a story we've been covering for years, the collective bargaining situation between SAPD and the city. A recent uh, update now saying a local watchdog group saying the officers, the recent contract is a step in the right direction. Amanda Tomas with Act for SA says there were some major wins negotiated the contract, primarily when it comes to discipline. The new contract limits the arbitration process, which in the past has allowed fired SAP officers to just get their jobs back. Now, if the contract is approved, an arbitrator can over 
only overturn a firing if the police chief doesn't establish that conduct would make the entire department look bad or a good reason to fire them based on what the contract described as law and sound community expectation. The inclusion of an officer's past record into a, not only consideration for discipline, but also to arbitration is a huge win for the community for us. On the other side, Tomas says this contract lacks changes to civilian oversight. She says at one point the Civilian Review Board, or CARB, was on the list of priorities for the city, but it fell off before they finalized the terms of the new contract. Before the contract is officially enacted, it does need to be signed off by the San Antonio Police Association and the San Antonio City Council. Castle Hills residents have a lot to say about a new $60 million apartment project being considered by city leaders. Residents packed out town hall discussion on the project yesterday. The lofts at Castle Hills is a 300 unit complex that would be built at Northwest Military and Lock Hill Selma. Representatives for the project say it would generate significantly more income for the city each year compared to the two undeveloped plots of land that currently sit at that location. However, residents express their concerns regarding tax breaks tied to the proposed deal, as well as a possible increase in traffic in the area. The project would need approval by the city before construction begins. And Dawn at the Alamo commemorates the defenders of the Texas landmark. This morning, crowds gathered to reflect on the historic siege and battle. Stephen Cavazos has been live there throughout the morning. Stephen, the ceremony has wrapped up, but what else is planned for the day? Good morning, Max and Sarah. Well, after the fall will be hosted by the Alamo chapter of the Sons of the Republic. That event is set to start in just a little bit at 10 this morning. Then shortly after that, the events do continue. The Alamo Mission chapter of the Daughters of the Republic will host a service that remembers the heroes of the Alamo. But today's remembrance began at dawn. Now, dawn at the Alamo is a ceremony that remembers the events and describes the events, more importantly, that led up to the battle of that day. Uh, there were musical performances this morning, history depictions, and even a live musket firing demonstration. J.D. Humber and his son Everett traveled from the Alamo City, traveled to the Alamo City, that is from Abilene. J.D. tells us that he's a member of the Sons of the Republic of Texas. He says this morning's event holds a significant meaning in Texas history. This is just part of who we are. So we wanted to come and honor those men that gave their lives um, on both sides and just celebrate what is Texas. Now, again, that ceremony has wrapped, but there will be other programs taking place later this morning. And you can see right behind me in front of the Alamo, they do have those wreaths that were laid there to remember the heroes of that day. Now, keep in mind, uh, there are going to be those other events that will be happening, but today's remembrance will conclude with Remember the Defenders. Uh, the Alamo describes that as a solemn ceremony that is set to begin at 6 this evening. Reporting live at Alamo Plaza this morning, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Max Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Stephen. And a third round of talks between Russia and Ukraine is set to take place on Monday. Russian President Vladimir Putin is warning that Ukrainian statehood is in jeopardy and is blaming U.S. sanctions. Meanwhile, a WNBA all-star being held by Russian authorities. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the details. Potential new trouble in the worsening relations between the U.S. and Russia. WNBA all-star Brittany Griner is in the custody of Russian authorities after they say they found vape cartridges containing cannabis oil while searching her luggage at an airport near Moscow. The State Department says they're aware of her arrest and will be doing whatever they can to help. The arrest comes as Russia continues its push into Ukraine. President Joe Biden speaking with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Biden says his administration is working closely with Congress to secure additional funding to help Ukraine. The UN estimated that by Saturday night, as many as 1.5 million people will have left Ukraine, with more than 750,000 people entering Poland. But as many people leave, many others stay behind to fight. In Kyiv, hundreds of men lined up, ready to join the Ukrainian army. We know why we are here. We know why we defend our country and our guys that are actually standing there and fighting uh, Russian military forces, they know what they are doing. Those guys, they don't. We know what we are doing and that's why we will win. Meantime, Russian President Vladimir Putin warning a no-fly zone over Ukraine would constitute a declaration of war. Both Visa and MasterCard suspending operations in the country. The U.S. State Department warning all Americans to leave as soon as they can. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York.
Well, back here at home, March is Women's History Month, and in celebration, 16 women were inducted into the San Antonio Women's Hall of Fame. Each inductee has made contributions to the San Antonio community, according to organizers. Right now, you can check out ksat.com and read about all of those incredible women. The San Antonio Women's Hall of Fame was started in 1984. All right, an annual St. Patrick's Day tradition in San Antonio will continue this year. The dying of the San Antonio River along the Riverwalk. This year, the Riverwalk's going to be dyed green. It's going to take place <laughs> from 1 to 3 p.m. on March 17th and March 19th. A St. Patrick's Day parade will take place from 4 to 5 p.m. on March 19th. It's along the two and a half mile downtown stretch of the Riverwalk. And don't worry, the dye is eco-friendly and it always disperses behind a barge that carries a bagpipe. Of course it does. St. Patty's Day tradition. And the dye I was reading, mm -hmm. it lasts for a couple of days, but by day two, it's starting to fade a little mm. bit. So that's just the color yeah. of the river. Yep. <laughs> All right, 840, 69 degrees out. Still to come, boxing set to take center stage right here in the Alamo City. Find out who is climbing into the ring and when. A new challenge is awaiting. Whoa! Look, there she is, our very own Sarah Spivey. Look at Katie Blake's face. Oh, <laughs> it's making my stomach drop. We'll give you a preview of that title surge ride that, oh my God, Sarah, your face. <laughs> Quick live look out of the Alamo City. Oh, cloudy. Warm though to start the morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the spring bre breaks look like? Is it going to be spring? We're going to check in with Sarah in just a bit after the roller coaster. Putin's war, the Russian assault, devastating Ukraine. One million refugees, desperate, the world on edge. Now, today, Marco Rubio questioning Putin's state of mind and real-time reports from the war zone on a special ABC's This Week with George. All right, so for so many of you out there, it is spring break. If you're looking for something to do, how about trying out the newest ride at SeaWorld? It is called Tidal Surge. It is the largest attraction of its kind in the world. Sarah Spivey say maybe don't try it out. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so here is our own Sarah Spivey and Katie Blake. They tried it out to give us their take on where the tidal surge ranks on the thrill scale. Hey everyone, meteorologist Sarah Spivey and meteorologist Katie Blake here at SeaWorld testing out this bad boy behind me. <laughs> tidal surge, the new ride here at SeaWorld. We're here with Ray. Is it still exciting when a new ride opens. It's exciting anytime we open something brand new here at SeaWorld. You will actually soar up 135 feet in the air at 68 miles per hour, giving you amazing views of the park. Oh We're God. gonna do it. I'm so excited. Let's check it out. See Katie and Sarah's full ride. Just become a KSAT insider by signing up at KSAT.com insider and getting exclusive access to that video. I think it's hilarious, Sarah Spivey. I, I think you <laughs> screamed like you've never screamed before and Katie Blake looked like she was having a really rough time. Yeah. <laughs> I was the only one screaming on that ride. There were other people on that ride, but it was it was intense. suffering through silence. It was very intense. Yeah, but a fun time there at SeaWorld. OK, outside right now, let's come back down to Earth and talk about how it is cloudy out there right now. This is a look at the satellite and the temperatures. There are some peaks of sunshine. Uh, across areas south of San Antonio and off to the east. But as you can see, clouds are building back over that. So it's going to be a fairly cloudy beginning to the day, a lot like yesterday, where we do eventually see some sun in the afternoon. For now, though, it's near 70 degrees at the airport, 72 at Stinson, 72 in Castroville. It's 69 in New Braunfels, a very warm start. We usually see 
an average start of the day in the 40s here in San Antonio this time of year. So we're well above that right now outside. In fact, our average high is 71 and we're already there. It's going to be a warm day for us at 68 in Del Rio and 65 in Kerrville. We're also seeing pretty breezy conditions out there too. Winds are from the south at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. That is continuing to bring in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. And so at the surface here, we've got dew points in the 60s. That is very muggy. Now, usually this would be a good thing because we want a little bit more rain in our forecast because drought conditions. But even with the front moving through late tonight, we're not expecting all that much rain with that front. Let me take you through the future cast for the day today. As I mentioned, we're going to hold on to those clouds through about lunch and then in the afternoon seeing skies clear. It'll be warm today, very warm. In fact, hot out toward Del Rio where it'll be near 90 degrees, 91 in Catula, 90 in Laredo. Around San Antonio, low 80s are a good bet for the forecast this afternoon, so definitely on the warm side, near 80 degrees up in the hill country too. We'll be at 70 degrees at 10, still fairly cloudy at noon as well, 75, and then seeing those skies clear, 83 for the high, winds breezy from the south at 10 to 15, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. Tonight is going to be mild. We don't expect that cold front to move through until after midnight. So let's talk a little bit about that cold front. Here's the wider view across the entire United States and there's that big low pressure system. This is that one that brought the devastating uh, tornadoes across parts of Iowa. Unfortunately, deadly tornadoes across Iowa. But behind this system, we've got a cold front that's pushing into North Texas as we speak. Look at that. It's freezing in Lubbock right now, but it's still 66 in San Angelo. Very cold air mass to our north that's going to be moving through overnight tonight. Will it bring rain? Well, yes, but just not all that much because we're going to be on the tail end of the system. Take a look at midnight tonight. Some severe storms possible up near the Dallas Fort Worth area, even some storminess across parts of Real County and, Ed and Edwards County. Uh, but it, again, we're on the tail end of the system. So here in San Antonio, really only expecting some light rain showers early tomorrow morning, close to the morning commute, slightly after dawn. Uh, and then throughout the uh, morning, that rain will be pushing to the east by 1 p.m. There still could be some light rain showers for our eastern counties, but in San Antonio, the rain will likely be done and it won't amount to much, maybe a tenth of an inch of rain here and there. It'll be windy with gusts up to 40 miles per hour tomorrow from the north. That'll filter in some colder air. Here's a look at high temperatures tomorrow in the mid 50s around San Antonio, so about a 30 degree drop tomorrow afternoon. It'll continue to stay chilly Tuesday with some sprinkles in uh, the area and cloudy conditions and Tuesday, it'll be hard for us to get out of the 40s. So a chilly day Monday and a chilly day Tuesday. We'll see better conditions Wednesday and Thursday for those of you enjoying spring break this week. Sunny skies, 60s and 70s on Wednesday and Thursday, but another cold front will move through early Friday morning. That'll drop temperatures back down into the 50s and actually bring us a late season freeze early Saturday morning. So prepare for that if you're a gardener and you want to get your spring garden going. Uh, maybe just prepare for the light freeze Saturday, and if you can, wait until after this weekend to plant. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 851, 69 degrees out. Well, it's almost National Cereal Day, so can Whoa. you guess which cereal people in the U.S. liked most? Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you which cereals made the top five list and which one is the most liked here in Texas. Apple. Good morning and welcome back to Zone and Golden Boy Promotions coming to San Antonio on April 9th. Headlining the fight with the undefeated lightweight Ryan Garcia. Ticket sales at the Alamo Dome set for a great start. Garcia has won four of the last fights by knockout. Garcia returning to the ring following wrist surgery back in October. Now under the new direction of a new trainer after parting ways with his old one. You can hear more from Garcia and the Golden Boy. Oscar De La Hoya tonight on Instant Replay, as well as your kickoff preview for the start of the regular season for the San Antonio FC. Instant Replay, 11 p.m., right after the night beat. Hey, we just cut the pollen count in. Molds are low at 350. Oak, ash, hackberry, and elm are present as well. 
all low too. So you can tell that those trees are starting to pollinate, but everything is low. Thank goodness. Now outside right now, it's still cloudy. We'll be seeing sun in the afternoon. 83, a warm day for us. Breezy too with winds from the south gusting up to 25 miles per hour, but windy tomorrow behind a cold front that'll bring a chance for light rain showers in the morning, but drop those temperatures into the 40s and 50s Monday and Tuesday. A little bit more sun. Wednesday and Thursday up the roller coaster, but then back down by Friday and the weekend. It's me going up and down the roller coaster. Yep. Sarah Spivey, thank you so thank you, much. Sarah. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Happy Sunday.